I didn't have like Twitter. I didn't have my Instagram. I didn't have anything back then. Um, and he was just like, yeah, you, like anything you're doing, you need to just put it on social media and you're going to meet a bunch of other people. And I was like, okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of like what triggered it. Okay. And then from there, it was like, I actually started to meet people uh, in the space. Like, you know, I started to have like Amazon friends, basically. E-commerce is the greatest business opportunity of our generation. Yo, 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 what's going on, people? It's your boy, Kaj. We are back in the virtual studio for another episode of the Ecom Unlimited podcast. I am here with Josh. What's going on, everybody? And today, our guest is our friend, Colin. Colin, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. How you all doing? Doing well. Thanks for making time and your busy schedule to chop it up with us. Yeah, happy to be on, man. All right, man. Well, let, take us take us back to the beginning. So uh, we know that you've been you've been selling on Amazon for for a couple years now. Done some OA, getting into wholesale. But take us back to you know the how you found out about the space and how you started selling. Um. So like originally, I I went through like that whole like year. Honestly, maybe even like two, where I was like research heavy, and was just like too afraid to actually pull the trigger and like start you know, getting into the, into the weeds. So I was like looking at books, I was buying books, I was reading through them, um, did that for a couple of years. And then like I stumbled on it, uh, almost like my first deal was almost a wholesale deal. Surprisingly, um, I found this, this lady, uh, for like 30 minutes from my place. And she had like a stockpile of like these like these shelves that you would put up on your wall. I mean like like five hundred or a thousand units or something, just sitting in her garage. <laughs> and uh, so I, I ended up buying like probably three hundred of those from her. And I, I knew nothing about the space like when I first started, so it was actually a private label brand. <laughs> That's and, crazy. and I, start, I started listing them and I got obviously I got IP'd within like two weeks <laughs> so yeah I, I, I was like I had no idea what I was doing at that point honestly I was like what's an IP I guess I'll just keep on going I don't know what this is <laughs> yeah so like I was just I, I had no idea what I was doing but it was at least like a step in the right direction and like it, it got my first sale on Amazon right. and like once you get that like the ball just starts rolling and then that's that's like all you need at the beginning to like start figuring this out basically and when was this this was like a year maybe a year and three months something like that it was okay, like it was so like it was like april of last year maybe so beginning of 2023 oh yeah yeah it was like yeah it's pretty pretty much beginning of 2023 okay gotcha and so when when you found this deal, were you just looking on Facebook Marketplace or were you on Twitter or some yeah, other social so we, platform where you uh, just were walking by their house? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> not that easy. But we, we, were, we had like always done, like me and my wife, we had always done uh, just like Facebook flips. Okay. Um, we would, you know, we would just find like furniture or whatever it may be and then, you know, fix it up or whatever it took to just flip, like we would hold it for a while and then just resell it for more. So, um, just stumbled across this, uh, person that had all these shelves just stockpiled. And I was like, I, she, I think she had originally posted that she had like 10 and I was like, Oh, well, if you have, you know, I'll buy all 10 of these. Cause like, it looks like they're pretty legit on Amazon. It was going to be like my first item basically. Um, so I asked her if she had more and she was like, Oh, actually <laughs> I have a whole garage of these things. There's like a thousand of them. And I was just like, Oh, okay. So I, I basically did like a test order and, you know, put like, I, I was like, yeah, I'll take like 300 of them. Cause it, they like the first 10 sold in like a day. Wait, so well, wait, crazy. so would, did this person end up being the brand owner? Like why okay, would so anyone a, have a, a thousand? Weird, weird I'm so situation. <laughs> So she was, she I later found this out that she was the brand owner's brother's ex girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So so basically, she 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 hit me up like <laughs> like two weeks later and was like, "Are you selling these on Amazon?" And I was just like, uh, "Yeah." Is like, was I not supposed to do that? 
And then obviously that's when the whole IP thing came. Like the next day, they hit me with an IP complaint, and I was just like, uh, <laughs> "Yeah." Oh, so so, so she. Funny. Oh no, that's terrible. But that is terrible. We, the, these things moved. Like they were gone by the time they IP'd me. That's nuts. It's, I would take the IP for three hundred <laughs> units. I don't even so, care. Yeah, like 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 yeah. three hundred <laughs> units in and out in like two weeks. Like they were. It was quick. Did you, awesome. Were you FBMing them? Uh, yeah, I was FBMing all of them. What, what was your profit per unit? Like six dollars. Oh, yeah, that's sick. I'd do it any day of the week. <laughs> oh, that's so. That sick. is a great first product. So that so that that was your proof of concept with Amazon. I'm assuming, right? So you, oh, yeah. you found yeah. this like product one, once. It's... Once I saw that, you know, like 10, 15 units or whatever, whatever it was at the very beginning, and then it's it started being like thirty a day or something. Um, but making like five, six dollars on each of those, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is it. Like, this is the business. hundred <laughs> percent. And then, so what, what was, what was the next step after that? Was it, cause I know you said you had been doing a lot of research. So did you then yeah. decide, okay, I'm going to try and do OA. I'm going to tr- like, what was the next step in sourcing? Um, after that it was, I, I had originally seen like miles videos on social media and was just like, oh, that looks kind of cool. Like maybe I should, you know, try that angle of it. Um, I discovered what like OA actually was. Like I didn't even know what OA was. Um, figured out online arbitrage, and then I I started really like just manual through Walmart. Like I would just pull up Walmart and try to find something that was selling for more on Amazon. Um, I found like a couple like little makeup items and not great profit on that on that stuff like at the beginning like you know your first couple products like suck you basically are just like right. trying to get the proof of concept yep. um so i would i would just like flip stuff off walmart i'd make like maybe a dollar on each unit and it wasn't like fast moving stuff it was like you know 10 a month or something like it was nothing crazy <laughs> um and i just i did i did that for like a couple months and then that's when i really uh, decided to like kind of take the leap of faith and then that's when I got into miles program and then after okay. that it was just like a rocket took off basically because <laughs> then I really was figuring out the system and like how to do it and how you know the ins and outs of it and all that stuff so nice right learn, learn the sauce on how to source OA yeah exactly because I hadn't I had no idea before I was just like I, I did tactical arbitrage for like a couple weeks never really had like huge success with it so i was doing that for a while and then just like manual sourcing random websites and i was i mean i was making money but it was like it was like a hundred bucks a month like it was nothing (laughs) right yeah so okay yeah especially for the hours that you were probably putting in definitely not worth you know the hundred dollars that you were probably making a month no not at all not at all at the beginning you're putting in so much time to learn the like the concept basically and it's like not it's not giving you back what you put in at all (laughs) yeah yeah it takes a while for that to actually kind of come back and usually pay you pretty well um now like in terms of like how you write it up finance wise was there anything like loans did you just work through like credit cards and all that kind of stuff how did you finance a lot of this inventory purchasing so at the at the beginning um it was mainly it was just like personal funds at the beginning um, I kind of like, I saw that it would work basically with that first product. And then, you know, I took out a couple thousand just from like my personal finances, um, bought some more inventory with that stuff, mainly those shelves, basically, um, flipped all of that. And then, you know, I saw the profit on that. I basically was just like, okay, this is going to be my little fund for Amazon. And I just kind of kept it separate from everything. And then I was just like looping that money at the beginning. Um, once I got into miles program and like really saw like what you could actually do with oa that's when i got the plum and then that was like a cheat code for yeah. for inventory basically 100 percent. okay cool so you basically just work through the plum and for yeah. newer listeners who don't know um with the plum um it gives you basically a whole other like 30 days uh to pay it off fully so that can allows you to basically um, kind of run, hopefully sell through most of your inventory before you actually have to pay that card down fully, um, which can really kind of help boost, boost cash flow. Um, so what are some things that you, what did you think, 
doing, you know, you did all this extensive research in the beginning. Then you go to Miles' course. What are some things where you're like, oh, I didn't even think this was even possible in terms of like what you researched in the beginning versus like things that you're kind of like doing now? Um, honestly, that that's probably one of them that like a credit card opens up like an entire next level of opportunity with OA, especially the plum, like when you have so much time to pay it off. Yeah, that you're you're able to find good products, which like I am at this point, like I can find pretty good stuff that moves quick. Um, you can you can easily sell through that inventory before you're even hit with like the payment on the inventory, which which I I honestly thought like coming into it and like when I was just kind of in like the research phase that you weren't really like able to make that much money unless you were coming into it with like 15, 20 grand, like ready to go. Mm, yeah. Which is, which is not the case. Like you can, you can honestly, you're not going to make a ton of money, but like you could probably start with like a thousand dollars to be honest. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. And just kind of continue just to work with that a thousand bucks. And then once you get better with it, you can really just start kind of turning it even faster and faster. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah, I love the idea of like everybody thinks, you know, you need a big bankroll to start or you have to borrow all this money up front when <clears throat> honestly you really don't. Um, you can, no. again, if you're smart about it, you know, you can really get yourself into a lot of trouble if we go on the flip side of things and you start using credit cards, don't, don't exactly know what you're doing, you can really get yourself into trouble and, you know, you're going to want to stay away from that, you know, and maybe pump the brakes a little bit um, if you do find yourself kind of over leveraging there. But yeah, it's just a great way to just get through some capital and get things flowing. Now, I it will was, say, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, no, 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 sorry go to ahead. cut you off. I, I will say like, I would highly not recommend just ripping credit cards for yes. like, your first six months probably <laughs> yeah until you really like figure it out what you're doing basically 100 percent. i totally agree you definitely need like a really good like proof of concept and know exactly what you're trying to buy before you go in on yeah. anything like that because it can get really yeah. scary and it can get scary fast which is not fun you don't want to be that way believe me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could, could not agree more you want proof of concept you want to know how to read a keep a chart you want to know your numbers before you start leveraging, you know, outside capital. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Now, now, when did you really start like getting into like the Twitter space? Because me and you have been friends for a while on X, and I wasn't sure when you first started that. Um, that would have been. So I think I, I think I got into Miles program in like I want to say it was like May or June of last year, um, and then I like I was. You know, I was I was like working away at it by myself basically for like two three months, and then I would I would like send a text. Miles is huge on this, as you all probably know. <laughs> um, I would send a text to Miles of like, "Hey, I got like you know this shipment out, whatever," and he's like, "That's awesome, man. Why are you not posting it?" <laughs> and I'm just like, um, Cla I was classic like, Miles. Classic yeah, like Miles. I didn't I didn't have like Twitter. I didn't have my Instagram. I didn't have anything back then. Um, and he was just like, yeah, you, like anything you're doing, you need to just put it on social media and you're going to meet a bunch of other people. And I was like, okay, I mean, that's, that's kind of like what triggered it. Okay. And then from there it was like, I actually started to meet people, uh, in the space. Like, you know, I started to have like Amazon friends basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, and then from there, like you're able to just like share a bunch of knowledge with each other. And I was like, oh, this actually works. I guess I'll start posting more stuff. So yeah, it, it's definitely it's definitely worthwhile for sure. Yeah, for yeah I, yeah, I I love. If anyone listens to our podcast and also listens to the Buy Box Bandits, you know that Miles has at least one point five rants per episode about needing to post on social media. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> for a sure. Well known fact. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And it was funny, Colin, because it's like uh, I I I remember because like I you know I was posting again. I don't have like a massive following like Kaj, and so you know I was posting I'm gonna call probably my like massive, but well okay. <laughs> compared to you we'll just say that and so you know i would post every couple of days and you know this colin guy just kept showing up and like my likes and like commenting on my stuff like he's a really cool guy so i just started doing it right back and then we became friends and then i remember at the like the miami seller conference because me and kaj were coming down late we didn't have a seat like the auditorium looked absolutely filled 
and we're like oh man there's like one section in this corner over here let's just go sit over there so like we, we scurry over there trying to like be like low-key about it we like sit down and then all of a sudden like i turn <laughs> to my left and you're there and you're like hey josh what's going on and like my yeah. heart like dropped through my stomach because i was like how does this guy know my name like this doesn't make any sense like how do i not know his like this and then all of a sudden like my like twitter like popped up in like my brain i was like that's Colin. I was like, Joe yeah. Colin, what's up? Like, that was so <laughs> sick. It's like my worst case scenario because I'm like terrible with names, but like great with faces. <laughs> so that was like a really funny way of like how we connected and like how social media like kind of like made us even closer friends because I remember we just hung out the whole time and it was awesome. Yeah. So definitely. It's really fun. It, it, that was like my first experience where like I was meeting a bunch of the guys like in person. Yeah. And it was really funny because like, I've I've seen all these people for like many many months on like Twitter and stuff, and then I'm just like, are you? A, do I know you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, I'm like, gosh, I know I know your Twitter handle. Um, yeah, <laughs> is yeah. You're, your going, you're like, are you calling FBA? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now, how was your first Miami Seller Conference, and what kind of knowledge did you get from that? Um, honestly, like my first impression was like it, it makes you actually feel really small because the some of the people there are just like absolutely crushing it <laughs> and, you, and you're just you're, like oh you're i'm, doing, I'm doing nothing yeah um but at the same time it's like it's also really motivating to see like you know if i put another five years into this where you can actually be basically um so that was that was a big takeaway <clears throat> just like seeing that the people that you know they post like like amazon the amazon lit guys um you see them online but it's like it's not the same when like you actually get to like shake their hand and talk to them face to face for a little bit yeah <clears throat> it's like oh these are these are just normal guys that literally did the same path that i'm on right now yeah 100 percent. they've just done it for 10 years and now they're really good at it <laughs> yeah and exactly. kaja kaja share, share your story about how small amazon lit made you at the uh amazon Center <laughs> conference i it it still blows my mind and I'm not, well, I'm, I think it's fine to share cause he posts screenshots online all the time. So when we were on the wholesale panel, um, I think this was the day two of it and they had all the wholesale guys there at once. Um, I was sitting next to Eric from Amazon lit and someone else was answering a question and he was like looking down at his phone and I just like happened to look over. And when I looked over, he had just refreshed the Amazon seller central app and it was I think it was seven million in sales for the last week, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, and just like <laughs> it's like so demotivating and inspiring and painful and glorious all at the same time." Yeah, exactly. That's like perfect <laughs> explanation. <laughs> but it was just that that quick moment because it was just like a quick side glance, and it wasn't like I was like trying to see what he was doing. I just happened to look while he like pulled it up, and it was. Like, like I said, it was like six or seven million in the last week. And I was like, all right, we got work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And I will drop yeah, some knowledge it. because me and Colin both talked with Amazon Lit for like probably three minutes. And this is, and I asked him point blank. I was like, what's the most important thing going into like 2024, 2025? And he said, do you know what he told me, Kaja? Brand what? direct wholesale. That's what he said. So all you well, ladies and gentlemen who stayed this long, <laughs> now you know. Good. Look, I, I could not agree with him more. Could not agree with him more. And and so let, let's actually, let's transition into, into talking about wholesale a little bit. So sure. um, and before we get there fully, <clears throat> so you did, you know, you did OA, you, you kind of, you got some, some coaching there. You, you figured out how to scale it. Um, when did you start thinking about wholesale and when did you place your first PO? Cause I, you've only been doing this for a year. So, you know, you're still really new to the game, but yeah, yeah. A decent amount of experience. Um, <clears throat> so my, I think my first kind of like I wholesale had always been in like the back of my mind. Um, but I didn't really like actually put any effort into it. And honestly, until probably, maybe three months ago at the two months ago at this point i mean it's not been that long really. right um mm -hmm. so i really started like looking for basically distributors at this point i'm just looking for distributors 
Um, yep. Maybe two months ago, started putting effort into that. Um, actually contacting people, like getting people on the phone, sending emails, that kind of thing. Um, I I don't know I don't know why, because it's it's a little different after you do it. But like before you jump into wholesale from like the OA side of things, I feel like everyone is super nervous to take that jump. Like they don't want to call people. <laughs> And it, it that really is bad. <laughs> like most most of the people that you get on the phone are like pretty chill. Yeah. So uh, that 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 is that that is a app that is such a great perspective to share because it, it was the same for me as well. Like I was super yeah. super nervous, you know, <laughs> thinking of all the worst case scenarios, thinking about them grilling me about being an Amazon seller, and yeah. it's normally just like, <clears throat> here's our application, here's our price, let's fill it out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And like I, I still, I think I've, I may not so much anymore, but like I would hit you and Corey with like a question about something, and I think I, I think I sent this to Corey, but it was like, what if they ask me about like you know product knowledge or whatever, and he was just like, dude, they're not gonna care. He was like, they just want you to spend money with them. He's just like, just reach out and see what happens. I'm like, okay, yep. <laughs> I start doing that, and like they they really don't care as long as you're going to tell them that you're going to spend 10 grand with them they're like all right send the po yep. <laughs> like that that's all they care about dude that's so At funny least I think... the distributor side of things yes, yes. that's yes. also fair and i think that's just so funny because i think like as amazons we are just absolutely grilled how hated we are in the wholesale yeah. space which is which is fair because like most of us and like there have been individuals who have taken the wrong steps to find distributors and i get it but does that really win on like your your psyche, like going after some of these like distributors and stuff when all they really care about is like, are you going to spend money with us or like, are you not going to spend money with us? That's yeah. at the end of the day, that's all they care about. And the easier it is you make them or allow them or whatever you need to spend money with them available, like the better responses you're going to get back from them, which yeah. is funny. Now, and I yeah, had to and... just like, I had to just like, train my train my mind and it took a couple repetitions of like actually calling and emailing and reaching out but like train myself that like if they don't want to work with you it's not that big of a deal yeah yeah you, you just you just exactly. move on to the next one in the list basically <laughs> yes a hundred percent exactly Reject, rejection is part of the game and you're going to get rejected or ghosted more often than not it's just about yeah. sifting through a list to find the yeses yeah. 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 And then exactly. one thing we, we kind of skipped over, but I did want to touch on just for the people listening. So uh, you also have a full time job, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, an, I'm a yeah. nerd outside of the Amazon world. Yes. And so this is something that you're you're able to do, like, you know, around your full time job and something that I'm assuming you're trying to build for the long term, whether or not you want to keep the full time job and have this or go <clears> full time <throat> into the business. You know, different people have different goals with that. But like what what's your long-term vision with that because you have a full-time job you have a family and also balancing the business so in the beginning like when i first started um this was basically like it was a side hustle i mean it's still a side hustle um but like really started as a side hustle i want to like the goal is to make like you know a thousand extra dollars maybe a month of like profit um surpassing that it's like it's still a side hustle, but it's almost like another full-time income at this point. I, I eventually want to get it to where it's like literally my only income. Like I'm full-time doing Amazon selling. Um, yes. I don't know how far down the road that is going to be, like how long it's going to take, but like ultimate goal, like I don't care how long it takes. If it takes another five years, that's like the ultimate goal basically. Nice. Okay. I, I absolutely love that. And it's, yeah. And, you know, I mean, we, we've seen it in Miami. It's it's totally doable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and it's it's something where, what once you get there, it's just it's a it's a totally different world, but it's yeah. a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And it, it's 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 honestly crazy. Like if you're you stay pretty active in like social media, some of these other guys are like just out the gate blowing up and going full time within like six months, which is crazy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but 100%. a lot a lot of those guys, at least from what I observe, are also not people with families. So it makes true. It really yeah, weird. that's very true. Yeah, <laughs> it's either they're not. Yeah, with it's it's, yeah. it's a little a little more difficult when you've got like other commitments outside of Amazon and you can't just like chill at the computer twelve hours a day. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it's like either they're like really young, they work at like 
a fast food restaurant, which really replacing your income with Amazon with a it's fast food restaurant, easy super level, yeah. easy at that point. <laughs> yeah. So the transition for them just totally makes sense. Um, yeah. And they don't have to pay for insurance. So that's like three <laughs> things that are just yeah, like, like really nice. I, I'm, gl I'm glad that like I finally have taken like the action on it and hopefully it'll play out long term. But like I'm so jealous of the guys that are like 20 that started this. <laughs> <laughs> if I would yeah. have done this when I was 20, I would be chilling right now. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Oh, and I, I wish, like, when me and Josh, when we first started, I, w if, I wish if we knew what we knew now. Oh, my gosh. We would be exactly. yeah, so yeah. far along. Oh. Yeah. It's crazy. And even, even more so because, like, I mean, I don't know, but, like, everyone says it was easier 10 years ago or five years ago. 100%. Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. We just as, picked the wrong the... version. We picked private label <laughs> and we should have picked OA. Oh, what idiots. <laughs> We didn't even know. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. And it was so funny because I, I, I really look back on it, and it was literally, I was between two guys. It was the guys who were like, oh, guess what I'm selling? A three-pack of Crest. And I'm like, that sounds stupid. And it's like, the other guy's like, create your own product. I was like, that sounds sick. And I should have went with the Crest guy. But but it's okay. <laughs> we, were, we were doing all right now, so I can't be too yeah. bad. <laughs> it, dude, we would have we would have been running up a bag okay. if we were doing wholesale in 2017, bro. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, but yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, even for us, right? Like we've been selling since 2017, so yeah. that's like seven plus years. So we have a ton of knowledge and experience. Yeah, but we we didn't really give it full time effort until 2021, and yeah. obviously that's when things really started to pick up. Yeah. So it's probably but, probably you know, not a, not the ideal route that you all took, but like I feel like the private label knowledge probably is super helpful when you're trying to do like the brand direct stuff. Yeah, super 100%. helpful. Yeah, it's so funny because I was more the private label guy, and I think Kaj is more the wholesale guy. So Kaj will call me like, "Hey man, what do you think about like some of these like keywords and stuff?" And dude, it just like comes back. And I'm like, oh, we need long tail keywords. We can't do short ones right now. It's like, oh, we yeah. gotta get like they have, they can only have so many searches. Like these are the ones that are gonna gonna convert the best. Like that all just like makes sense to me. While Kaj is more on the wholesale side, like PO, like making sure all our tax documents and like resale, <laughs> like license and all that kind of stuff are it like that's his like bread and butter. So it, yeah. we, we kind of work well together in that regard, which is nice. Yeah, but ha having the the private label knowledge, going back to what Josh said about the brand direct, it, it makes a huge difference because we're yeah. able to do all that stuff in house for the most part. And obviously, you know, right. we still have room to grow and things we can improve on. But I mean, we we've done it for long enough that that we do know what we're doing. Yeah, which is, which and that was that would be that would be like ultimate ultimate end goal is to have like you know three, four, five, ten brands that you're working with. That's yeah, all we like, need literally the only one running their products on Amazon. Yep. I mean, even probably one good brand and you're good. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. That, that, yeah. exactly. And what, and one thing me and Josh have talked about, and this isn't like really in the works now, but I, I think within the next few years, there's also potential for us to buy some of the brands that we go direct with as well. Oh yeah, which is, that's true. Which is way easier than doing private labels instead of just oh, starting a brand. Yeah. Just find a brand, partner with them, grow it, and then buy it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the the uh, the as Steve Roll said, private equity meets Amazon. Yeah, can't private grow them too much though, or else you're going to be paying one heck of a pretty pen. No, I'm just kidding. Right. Well, yeah, you got it. You gotta you gotta do enough of a good job <laughs> yeah, that they want to exit, but not too good of a job <laughs> so that you're overpaying. It's like a, yeah. it's a happy medium. <laughs> Oh, that's so, so cool. Kyle, I'm I'm curious. So from when you started, you know, or spring of, of last year till now, what has your revenue like monthly revenue growth looked like? Um so I started out I mean I I didn't have bad months like when I first started. Like I think my first month I did like seven thousand. And then I that's pretty I, good. I basically did that for three months, like the same level. And then I was like, All right, uh I know, you know, I, I'm, I'm like making a little bit of money. It's not like crazy income. Um, I'm going to use, I'm just going to literally like loop that into some more like education, kind of figure out what's going on. So I put it in the miles program. Um, once I, once I started miles program, I went to like 30 K the next month. Classic. Um, we did the same thing. Yeah. And then I, I think I, I basically stayed at that level until 
I mean, probably like, well, well, Q4 doesn't really count, but like up until like October, and then I started doing like 70 to 90 in Q4. And then it's it's back down a little bit from there, but like I'm still staying at like the 40 to 60 range right now. Um, so right, side now, hustle. right now, right now, right now we're kind of coasting at like the you know the 45 to 60 range, basically. So you just casually Which do 60k I, a month. Let's just call that a side hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a mid mid six figure business being a side hustle, which is the the beauty of the power of of Amazon. Yeah, it's. 100%. I mean, it, like it's uh, what we were talking about earlier. There's so much work at the beginning to like figure it out that a lot of people are are not going to do that because if you're making like two hundred dollars on like eighty hours a week, <laughs> then yeah, no, a lot of people aren't going to do that. But if you can stick it out now you're on like the flip side of it where like i can i can honestly realistically work probably like 10 hours a week on amazon at this point and like coast a 40k month yeah like that's it's, awesome it, now that you know now that you've got like the replans you know you know where to find them yes, easily yes yes it's yeah. it's not it's it's so much less work at this point but i still i still put in a ton of effort because i want to go to like i want to go to the next level i want to start doing six figure months Yes, hundred percent. What what made you want to, you know, go big with Amazon? A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people, you know, get can get stuck around like that twenty to like forty k level. What makes you want to get it and build it into like multi million dollar business over you know five years and all that kind of stuff? Super easy answer with that one. Literally every time I walk into my nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every time, every time I have to go to work, I'm just like, why? <laughs> sure yeah yeah absolutely. like i i you know like my couple shifts of of my nursing job i mean it's it's a good job like it pays well but i would rather work 80 hours a week on amazon than the 36 that i work on like that job gotcha. because i i don't know like i mean i guess it's just because it's your own thing you don't have a boss you can make literally every decision you want um, it's way more fulfilling and like, you don't have someone, you know, talking down to you and telling you like, do this, do that. <laughs> you kind of just sure flow on your own basically. Yeah. That's awesome. That's such a great answer. I mean, for me, I'm just excited to kind of like open up some more time cause it's like, yeah. And uh, I could work 80 hours on my business a week if I really want to at the end of the day. Um, but also, you know, there's other things that I can work on as well. And especially yeah. if your business only needs, you know, I mean, yeah, you can coast, you know, 10 hours, you know, a, a, a week doing 40K months, which is fantastic. You know, soon that's going to be, you know, five hours a week. And then soon that's going to be three hours a week if you really stack your time right. And you know exactly yeah. what, you know, what everyone's doing and everybody has a role in terms of like if you do get VAs and stuff. So, yeah, and that's just exciting because then you can open up more time to do like potentially even bigger things than Amazon. So Right, yeah, yeah. That's and then cool. obviously have you know if you've got wholesale would be like wholesale or brand direct would be the ultimate ultimate goal yeah where you're you're literally just replanting stuff from the yeah. same suppliers um at that point then you can really really delegate because you're just doing the same processes over and over 100%. and then you and then you've got way more time for family or whatever at that point and and on top of that you're making you know twice as much money as you used to be your 100%. margins are so much better. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Much better. You, <laughs> I'm sure. Have, I'm have, sure you, yeah. have you started reaching out directly to brands yet? Um, I have. Like, I, I, just a little bit. Like, honestly, okay. probably three to four brands so far have had okay. like zero luck. Um, okay. it, and it, I, I honestly think I'm like overshooting it because these are pretty. They're not like like you wouldn't know them if you heard their names. You'd be like, oh, okay, what's that? But. Sure. If you look them up on Google, they're pretty big companies. Gotcha. So I feel I feel like that's probably I'm probably like overstepping at this point, basically. Yeah. I mean, now were those there, were but... those brands you looked up? Oh, sorry, Josh. No, go ahead. <clears throat> were those brands that you were looking up on Smart Scout or <clears throat> brands that you found from your distributor? Those were actually so. I think it was Corey made a video on this. It was basically go down your your list of inventory. Write okay, down, yeah. write down every single brand of like a product that you currently sell OA. So I, I that's exactly what I did, and it was like it was actually quite a bit. It was like sixty brands. Wow, so, 
Um, I just picked out a couple of those that like seemed fair, you know, from their products seemed fairly promising and then just like basically hit them up. Um, didn't work out in my favor, but it was worth a shot at least. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, yeah. dude, dude, if you hook one, I mean, gosh, I mean, we have our <clears throat> one brand direct that we're still working with and it's, you know, it's crazy. It's awesome. Um, yeah. And I mean, one I've, brand can change your business. So for sure. I've learned, uh, like uh, for just from doing this for like a year plus, um, like I don't really, I'm going to, I'm going to take the shot on like whatever at this point. Like yeah. the worst thing that can happen is they're just like, yeah, no, we're good. But if you don't ever even attempt the the shot, then there's zero chance of it ever happening. Exactly. So, like, I don't really, I mean, I, it doesn't bother me to reach out to like anybody at this point just to see if maybe I like, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be like their one on one to one brand direct. I just want an account. <laughs> yeah, no, right. exactly. Exactly. And the, awesome. the one thing that I've learned especially specifically when you're reaching out directly to brands if you want to work with them versus distributors is when they say that oh no we're good then you have then the next step is convincing them that they're not good yeah (laughs) because i literally i literally had a call with a brand yesterday and she was like yeah you know had some amazon sellers in the past and you know it didn't really really work out the way i wanted it to and i was like oh yeah i totally get that because they probably did this and she was like yeah and i was like well we do this and she was like oh I never thought about that. I was like, exactly. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and so it obviously when you're able to, even if you're not really going to provide a ton of additional value, like if you don't have the private label experience that, you know, that we have, you still as an Amazon seller and obviously, you know, talking to you, but also talking to the audience, like if you've been doing OA or wholesale arbitrage, you know what a good listing looks like. You know what a bad listing looks like you know what a good keeper graph looks like. And that knowledge in and of itself is more than enough to be able to pitch a brand on why you should be a good partner for them and why even if you're just trying to get the account and buy and flip and you're not trying to fix their listings and everything to start, you can say, hey, like if this partnership works down the road, these are some additional services that we can provide. I see these things on your listing. I see, you know, these discrepancies, these problems, and these are all things, you know, that we can help you with. And it doesn't have to be, okay, I'm going to do these off the bat. But even just having that in your tool bag as you're having the conversation yeah, will huge. separate you from the other hundreds of Amazon sellers that are hitting them up with the at gmail.com address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And I uh, like just exactly what you're saying. Like you, you understand Akipa. You know how to read a listing basically at this point. It's like, you know, I, I have some listings like even right now that I haven't like, I haven't spent the time to reach out to the brand directly, but like I see their listings. And then like from the flip side of being an OA seller, I'm like, you realize you used to be selling this for like 22 and now you've got 17 other sellers on this and now it's $12 and you could be selling it for 22 and get all of these other sellers off the listing at this point. Like you're losing money, you're losing money to OA sellers just by, you know, doing that. So like to say that as an OA seller, it sucks. But at the same time, if you went that route, they could be making a lot more money. And then you're also getting your margin on top of that, basically. Yeah, exactly. And, And another part with that, and this is just a tip, like when I'm talking to brands and I see that as an issue, especially if you're talking with someone who's if it's a small brand, if it's the owner or co-owner or someone you know who's actually invested in it, they they really care about brand value perception. And they might not use that terminology. Different people will call it different things. But like, if they have a product that they actually believe in and they think is high quality, they want the pricing to reflect that. So it's like, hey, people think this is a you know a really cheap product and they're just buying it because the pricing is good, but now they're not even ever going to go buy on your website because they can get it for 50 percent off on amazon all the time like let's let's right. fix that yeah and also and it, just it, like sorry go ahead con no you're, you're you're good i i was just gonna say like i looking at so many listings over the period of a year plus like i feel like that's there's a there's so much opportunity with that just to go to the brand directly and be like hey you realize you are losing money right now just because of this situation. You're running these sales 
on your website where people are getting the stuff 50% off and then they're just relisting it on Amazon. And yep. they're, you know, unless you have like quantity limits, they're ordering thousands <laughs> at a time. Yeah. Because exactly. I do that. <laughs> we do the same thing. Because <laughs> I do that. I used to. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's like my bad, but just so you know. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. It, and it's like, you think you have your tr- customers are buying, it's just the OA grifters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, if you're going to have 22 people selling your product, it's like, and you want a, a certain presentation or like a certain way that you want your products being sold. Like, I mean, golly, I'm going to assume one of the packages got damaged as you shipped that to their house and they're going to send it in anyway, regardless. And then that Amazon's customer is going to get, you know, that packaging that's, you know, beat up or a hundred percent completely potentially inauthentic if they if there's a good copycat out there. So I think there's just a lot of ways that you can kind of pitch brands on, you know, the importance, you know, of one being on the Amazon platform, that's really important. And then two, having someone who they can trust that is, um, you know, repackaging their products and shipping it, you know, to customers in a certain presentation as well. Yeah. 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 Some, it's definitely some key points. Now you are, you're a part of our wholesale network. And you were kind of like one of like the earlier ones to come into the program. Like, how did you one learn about the wholesale network, and like, what were some, what were some like things that made you interested in it? Um, I, I Kaj, I think honestly, we had talked about. I don't know if this was wholesale network, but we had talked about doing some sort of like wholesale mentorship. This was a while ago. Like, this is probably like five months ago six months ago was I this remember. was this in miami or before miami this is before miami oh really okay okay yeah we had messaged on twitter about it and, and yeah oh that's right that's right got went, went back and forth a couple times and then while we were in miami you were just like oh hey by the way um we have this group um we're looking to like you know ramp up and teach people how to do wholesale basically and yes. honestly that was like the perfect timing because that was kind of like when i was really looking to, to, to move to wholesale and just add a little bit of wholesale to the business. Um, so literally you're, you're the reason I found out about it. Um, and then I guess it was a month or so we had, we had gone back and forth a couple of times, but it was, it was a month or two later, uh, when the yeah. schedule kind of aligned to where I could actually start getting on the calls and stuff. Um, but like the, the group itself, I mean, Corey's awesome. Jonah's awesome. Kaj, uh, like the, there's so many people in the group. Um, it's just like, it's a really good resource to, uh, you know, learn the wholesale side of things. Um, especially get some motivation. Like you see people posting POs and stuff like every day <laughs> almost. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. so it, yeah, it's, it keeps you sort of motivated on, on the, on the wholesale track basically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And well, we, cause we were now, cause I do remember now that we were, we were talking earlier in the year too, cause me and Josh were doing some mentorship as well, but then right pretty much right during Miami is when me and Corey and then Jonah decided to partner up. And I actually think it used to be called the wholesale, the Amazon wholesale community Then we rebranded to the wholesale network. But that's when we're like, let's just, instead of all doing our own things, let's just collaborate and yeah. you know, make the, the best it's community. On, that's I, yeah. I, th- I think that was like a great decision to have like yeah. all three of you basically teaming up on it um, and teaching everybody. And it's, it's cool how they have, like, you all have like the, you know, the tiers to it. Like there's the mastermind and then yep. sort of like the lower tier that is like the, I guess, you know, more beginner flavored wholesale basically. Um, yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a cool way to, cool way to do it. And then like, you know, hopefully down the road I'll level up and make it into the mastermind yeah. level. And then that's, that's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the mastermind level is, is cool, too, because, I mean, obviously, it's the same thing in regards to it being a wholesale folks community. Everyone in there is, is selling on Amazon. Some people are multi-channel, too. Um, but in that group, since it's all seven-figure plus sellers, we also do group buys, which I'm, I'm sure you you know. And some of those group buys are just so big. There's some of them where it's like, man, I want to get on this so bad, but all our cash is strapped, and I can't. And it's like a $500,000 PO split like six or seven ways, and I'm just like, Phew. I, correct it, me if I'm wrong, but I, I think I saw a post from Corey that said that they they had collectively spent like it was like it was something ridiculous. It in was like the lot. last like two months. It was like yeah. multi millions. It, it it was definitely multi millions. <laughs> One of those yeah. POs we did get it on. Um, 
because there was there was a few different products that had higher sale prices, and I think there was two or three different distributors that just all had really good deal flow in that period of time. And yeah. between everybody, it was like it was a couple million dollars spent. It was it was crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. So, yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. All right, I have kind of a couple more questions. Did anything like concern you before like joining the wholesale network? Like, did you have any concerns about joining a group and stuff like that? Um, not not really at that point, honestly, because like I, I, when I was like newer into the game, um, like I was I was super hesitant about spending money on Miles program at the beginning. That like, was it's, me. It's not. It's not. It's not cheap. No. Um. So like I, you know, I did that, and then I kind of learned like, oh, like okay, so if you do put a little bit of money into education, it's well worth it. So, from there, from there on, honestly, I've, I've, I don't know how much I've spent total on like education for Amazon, basically. But like, I don't, I don't mind to like take some of the profit and put it back into like learning the business more, because I, I, I feel like you could do this twenty years, and there's always going to be something new to figure out, basically. Um, so not, it did, I wasn't like super hesitant, um, gotcha. to, like put some money into like, especially like a good network of guys. And then also the education piece of it to like learn wholesale. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like you like going into the program, you know, everybody has like an expectation of what it's going to be and how it's going to go. Did you feel like you received what you expected when joining the group? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's cool. Like, Kaj and Corey so far have been super helpful with, uh, like, I've done two different POs so far, wholesale POs, and I've literally sent them what the items are and the breakdown, the buy cost, and what the profit's going to be. And they're like, yep, that's good. <laughs> or, or like, uh, don't buy this product. This one's not that great or whatever, whatever it may be. So it's nice to have, like, instead of the OA side of things where you're buying, like, 10 to 15 of an item, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot different when you're about to buy 900 of an item and you want to see that it's, like, actually good. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little different. Like, wholesale, I'm, I'm learning that it's just not, it's not OA. Like, there's just a whole different It's level. so different. It's yeah. so different. Yeah, yeah that's, it's not that's like, cool. it, it's not like it's, like, harder it's just uh, the you're buying more product you're spending more money and then i'm also learning that the i think i talked to you about this kaj like the the cash flow is so different mm -hmm. because you're like instead of that like month turnaround maybe for like a oa to fba product it's like pushing two months at this point for wholesale yep yeah, and this is something uh, I think I talked about this too at the Miami Seller Conference. But one of our biggest shocks transitioning into wholesale was the difference in cash flow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes the suppliers can have lead times, and I think as you found out, sometimes they'll tell you a lead time based on what you know where the product yeah. is in the that, that in the supply one. That chain. one hurt a little bit because I was it hoping hurts. to have that like yeah, I was hoping to have like that product stocked and ready to go for back to school, but like it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Did it? Ha because I forget what you said. Was it? Is it supposed to be getting in beginning of August? Early, now? early, early August. But okay. as you know, like getting stuff into FBA, like that's probably going to add another two, maybe three weeks. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully uh -huh. it works out, but it might yeah, not maybe, at this point. Yeah, I, I forget how much of it you bought, but if you can, just send A it lot. in small parcel. <laughs> send in, send it in small parcel instead of uh, via pallet. Yeah, yeah, that's Very true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can, the, the cash flow thing can be, can be challenging, which is why the plum is so key, especially when you're yeah, doing wholesale yeah. with new suppliers. But I was talking to another guy yesterday, just, just a buddy in the space. I was cashing out with him and I was like, I really don't miss OA pretty much at all. But the one thing I definitely do miss is just getting a product delivered to the house in two or three days and yeah. then getting it shipped out as soon as it's in. Cause that, yeah. it's just different with wholesale. I could yeah, be, really I mean, I could be like, I'm so new to the wholesale space that like, maybe it's just, it's just different suppliers will have, you know, actually have stuff like in stock sitting on their yes. shelf. <clears throat> but the ones that I have found so far, 
are you know it's it's like it hasn't it hasn't worked out to where i've put the order in and like they shipped it out in a week like this is just mm. not not realistic really? none none of them no i i like my, my my two so far that i've ordered okay. from it's like we're gonna have the product on this date and then it gets like delayed a week or two and then there's like another week of like sorting something out and then and then they might ship it at that point <laughs> gotcha yeah and yeah. And I mean, we've, we've had that too, so I'm not saying that's abnormal, but again, yeah, yeah. on the brand direct side of things, this is why I like ordering from brands <laughs> directly. And obviously, you know, yeah. brands, then the next thing is there, you're going to have manufacturing issues. So if a product sells really well, then it's like they're out of stock because they're getting more manufactured and that happens too. But if more times than not, when you're ordering directly from a brand, they have the product ready to go. And then, so you yeah, don't have to worry about that. Probably nice. sitting on a warehouse of whatever the product is basically. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, and I I think I saw a post recently from Jonah. It was like one of the things that he checks for with a supplier is like, do you have the product in stock that I'm about to order? Which which is yeah. which is a, a question that I'm about to start asking people. It's like, do you have this ready to go, basically? <laughs> Instead of like a you know one two three week lead time for the product. Yes. No, it's most huge. most definitely. And obviously, you know, there's some products where it makes sense where if they do have a lead time and maybe they're willing to take a deposit, whether it's 20 yeah. percent, 50 percent, whatever it is, and then the rest when it's ready to ship. Um, but if they're like have a lead, if they say they have a lead time and they're like, well, maybe three to four weeks ish, but oh. we need all the money now. It's like, well, that's dangerous. I, I'll probably pass on that one. Yeah, that's that's like that's the good thing is like the ones that I have bought. I've not had to pay like fully up front at least. Okay. So good. It doesn't good. it's not tying up like massive amounts of, of cash at least. Yeah. That's always nice. We yeah, had that geez. happen. We learned that the hard yeah. way. <laughs> Very hard way. Very it still hard hurts. Way. Oh yeah. And so much. like that that's an advantage of wholesale network is like I can be like, you know, I'm about to spend this much on this product. Should I wait three weeks to get it? And Corey will just be like, No, like that's not yeah. worth it. No, absolutely <laughs> not worth it. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And these are like mistakes that can like set you back months. These aren't mistakes that'll set you back weeks. So you buy a bad OA product, eh, like, okay, I can, I can take two on the chin or three on the chin per month and not really feel an effect. Man, you make one bad wholesale buy. <laughs> and let me tell you, you're going to set yourself back months, which we've had, which we've done multiple times. Fun. Yeah. Fun <laughs> for us. Woohoo. You know, but that's the, you know, that's why we have part of the group. This is when yeah. we didn't have the group. I mean, we didn't have the group back then and we made some, you know, <laughs> We made some questionable buys and we got, you know, we got caught. So, you know, Look, it I'm is what it is I'm at the end of the day. I'm asking questions in the mastermind all the time. Yeah. And I've, <laughs> exactly. I've been doing this for seven years and I'm like, guys, I have no idea. I've never seen this situation. Please, someone help. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's super helpful to have that network for sure. Like that. I, I don't, coming into it two months ago, I still don't know much about wholesale, I feel like. But like even before then, like I, I knew nothing. I didn't even know how to approach it. I was just it's like it's like a totally different ball game compared to OA for sure. Yeah. So yeah. It, to have like people that, you know, you all that have done it for years um and are like Corey and Jonah are doing like multi seven figure month or what six figure months I guess. I don't know what Jonah's doing a lot. Yeah. He's doing <laughs> jo big Jonah's months. close. Jonah will be pushing seven figure months soon. Yeah. Soon. Insane. Yeah. It's <laughs> crazy. I mean, yeah, it's Joan is one of those people that makes me feel really small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, Colin, we appreciate you being on today. Where can people go find you on the internet? Um, so my Twitter and my Instagram are both Colin underscore FBA. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm always looking to connect with people. So hit me up on there. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, thank you all for listening. If you've got value from this episode, give it a like and subscribe to Ecom Unlimited so you can stay updated on all of our new content. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.